So in today's video, we are going to be covering, I think, one of the most interesting angles on the new MacBook Pro, and that is really, does size matter? I have here two MacBook Pros that are configured exactly the same. So both of these laptops have the M1 Pro with the 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and one terabyte SSD. So this 14 inch MacBook Pro will set you back $2,499 and the 16 inch is exactly $200 more at $2,699. So these two computers have, according to Apple, the exact same specs, performance, everything. The only difference that Apple will tell you there is between these two MacBooks is, well, obviously the display size as well as a little bit of battery. But in today's video, we are going to be putting those claims to the test. Does Apple really think they can beat the laws of physics and deliver the exact same experience in a package that's smaller and has less cooling potential? And what about the battery life in the real world? How much difference does that actually make? Today, we are gonna find answers to all of that to see what the real differences are and whether the 16 inch is worth $200 more than the 14 inch. So stay tuned, get subscribed, this is a fun one. We all love the feeling of unboxing a fresh brand new Mac. It's shiny and clean and it runs super fast. But over time, as you live with the device, it tends to clutter up. And that's where today's video sponsor, Clean My Mac X, comes in. It's trusted by millions of users worldwide, including me, because I use it on my personal MacBook Pro. The most popular feature is the Smart Scan, which examines your system to weed out system log files and user cache that is no longer needed. It runs a quick malware check, as well as necessary maintenance scripts to top up performance as well. For example, my smart scan found 27.5 gigabytes of junk files to get rid of from my 256 gigabyte SSD. That's a big difference and it frees up a lot of space. Space Lens is another great feature that allows you to see what files are eating up your storage. And the optimization feature gives you a more straightforward look into your system's performance than the built-in activity monitor. CleanMyMac offers a ton of great features to keep your Mac tidy, running well, and free of cryptocurrency miners, viruses, and adware. To try out CleanMyMac X today, check out the link in the description below. And now, back to the video. Now, the 14-inch MacBook Pro is probably my favorite form factor, and I'm going to be working on a mega comparison. I have one more 14-inch coming in. I've got a base model and this one, and I've got one coming in with an M1 Max, so we're gonna do a big three-way comparison. Let me know what you wanna see tested out in that video, and I'll try to get as much as I can. Okay, so we are going to start out today's comparison with performance, because this, this is something that a lot of people have been asking about. When you're talking about two computers of different footprints that have the exact same internals, and, and Apple is out here saying, hey, guess what, they're the same. They perform the same, everything is the same. Kind of makes you wonder, you know, cap or no cap, is it really possible to get the exact same performance out of a computer that is two inches smaller than the other one. So to find out, I ran my full benchmark suite on both of these devices. And just to make it even more fair, I ran them at the exact same time. So there were no external factors like environment or time of day or whatever that could get in the way here. Now, I'm gonna run through these pretty fast because I think you're gonna be surprised. So starting off in Cinebench R23, the 14 inch scored 12,314, the 16 inch 12,315. In single core, the 14 inch 1524, the 16 inch 1533. Moving over to Geekbench 5 multi-core, the 14 inch 12,489, the 16 inch 12,502. Geekbench 5 single core, we had 1754 on both. Geekbench 5 compute, 41554 for the 14 inch, 41856 on the 16 inch. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, that one was a dead heat, 55 FPS average on both devices. Moving over to Blender, we saw 507 seconds on the 14 inch and 510 in the classroom render. 
198 on the 14 inch and 200 on the 16 inch in the BMW render. In the BMW GPU render, 298 and 296. And then in the Mr. Elephant EV render, 34 on both. Moving over to our Final Cut Pro render, we had 216 seconds on the 14 inch and 209 on the 16. And in the export, both did it in 108 seconds. In the DaVinci Resolve export test, we had another tie, both did it in 39 seconds. Moving over to GFX Bench, in the Aztec high tier benchmark, both scored 165 FPS. In Manhattan 1080p off screen, we had 893 on the 14 and 892 on the 16. And then in T-Rex, 1580 on the 14, 1579 on the 16. In 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, the 14 inch gave us 10,326 points with 10,333 on the 16 inch. And then in V-Ray CPU, 7727 on the 14, 7627 on the 16. And then finally in Basemark GPU, we saw 4892 on the 14 and 4883 on the 16 inch. So I thought that was a really, really interesting set of tests because all of the results were within the margin of error. Apple's claims hold up here, quite frankly. Like all of these tests were performed side by side and in the same order. That is big because if there is gonna be any thermal degradation, we would see that on both of these devices because they ran the tests in the order that I listed them out. So the fact that they were able to stay the same the whole entire time shows us not only that the performance is identical, but that it is sustained in the same way across both of these devices. But here's the thing, folks. The laws of physics still exist. And the fact of the matter is, when you look at these two computers side by side, objectively, the 16 inch has more internal volume, which means more room for fans, more room for heat sinks, more room for batteries, and more room for airflow. So while we were able to determine that the performance on both of these machines is the same, that's not the complete picture. So I set up an experiment. So when comparing these two laptops with identical specs, we don't just want to know about performance. We want to know about battery life and thermals. And that's what I'm going to test now because I'm going to run my Final Cut Pro render, Final Cut Pro export, as well as my DaVinci Resolve export and a 10 minute Cinebench test all back to back. And what I want to know is how much battery do all of those tests use? And also, what are the differences in thermal performance? Is there going to be more fan noise and heat on the 14 inch? So let's find out. So what were the results on this initial test? Well, it took about 35 minutes to complete, and in that time, the MacBook Pro 14 inch dropped to about 86% battery, with the 16 inch still at 91% battery. So a noticeable difference there, but not too bad. In terms of temperatures, both were pretty much identical at around 54 to 58 degrees Celsius on the different sensors. But where things were different was the fan speed, the 16 inch was sitting at around 17 or 1800 RPM, whereas the 14 inch was all the way up at 4000 or 4300 RPM. So the difference between that was basically dead silent on the 16 inch and audible, but not very loud on the 14. So now I want to take this test to the next level and really torture the 14 inch to see if we can find any weaknesses in battery life, in thermals, thermal throttling, in fan noise. So what I did was run the full suite of GFX Bench metal tests back to back. That's like 35 minutes each. So it was over an hour and I ran them on both of these devices. So I charged them both back up to full and started a new test. And what I found was really, really interesting. So running the tests yielded very much the same results. The performance was the same, just like we had talked about earlier. However, after the first run, I noticed that the 16 inch was sitting at 94% battery with the 14 inch at 86%. And for control purposes, I also ran this test on the 13 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip to see how that would perform. And the battery on that device was sitting at 96%, which was pretty interesting. It was a little bit higher than the 16 inch. 
Now, after the second run, the 16 inch was sitting at 86%, the 14 inch at 76%, and the 13 inch at 87%. Now, after both of these tests had concluded, I watched the temperatures wind down on these devices. After running both tests, the temperatures were exactly synced across the 14 and 16 inch. They went from the mid to high 50s down to 30 to 36 Celsius on the different sensors at the exact same rate. But with the fans at 1500 RPM on the 16 inch and 3000 RPM on the 14 inch. And keep in mind, this is after the test was completed. Now at this time, the 15 inch fans were completely inaudible. When I say 1500, 1800 RPM, that might not translate to you, but to your ear, you can't tell, it was dead silent. But to get an idea of what the fans actually sound like when you push these devices to the max, I ran Cinebench back to back three times. So that's 30 minutes of completely maxing out the CPU. And I did this also on the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro and just for poops and giggles on the 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro to get a comparison to what things used to be like just one short year ago. As much as I've been nitpicking the 14 inch here, compared to Intel, it's just not even close. And keep in mind here, just like before, Apple is basically making sure the internal temperatures on the 14 and 16 inch are identical. It was almost spooky to see. Furthermore, crucially, after this back to back to back testing, the 14 inch was still scoring right on par with the 16 inch within 10 points. So clearly it's able to sustain maximum performance for quite some time without having to ramp up the fans further and without letting the temperatures climb above 60 degrees Celsius. That is simply astounding. We are talking about desktop levels of performance and better than desktop levels of cooling. You go and look at water-cooled PC builds. These are the kind of temperatures that you would see on those types of systems. And we're talking about fan cooling in a laptop, being able to match that with performance that can in many cases match or exceed desktop computers. That to me is the real story here. Unfortunately though, battery is a sacrifice you do have to make when squeezing the same computer into a smaller package. You may recall after running GFX Bench, we were at 86% on the 16 inch and 76% on the 14 inch. Well, these tests, the back-to-back -back Cinebench runs were immediately after that. And so now the 14 inch is at 51% battery, while the 16 inch and the M1 have now tied both at 67%. Still though, we've been basically maxing out the SOC and that is really solid battery performance. But I wasn't done yet, <laughs> guys. I wanted to really make this 14 inch suffer and see if we could find the most extreme scenario where it would maybe start to throttle or overheat or something. So, I mean, this is just cruel, but I got a blanket and I covered up the vents. By blocking the airflow, we should be able to see if the 14 inch can keep temperatures under control as well as it has so far. Now, one thing that might help us out here is the new vent design for this generation of MacBook Pro. This intakes and exhausts partially up and into the display rather than entirely behind the device like Intel MacBooks. So we'll see if this has an effect on airflow as we are now blocking 80% of the vents, including the air intakes on the bottom front of the device, as well as the intake and two exhausts on the rear of the device below the display. Despite the cruelty of this test, I'm absolutely astounded at how well the little guy did. Towards the end of the test, it did need to ramp up the fans a little bit more than we previously had seen without the blanket. So we got up to around 5,000 RPM versus 4,000 to 4,300. But even this, was still very quiet, and we are still under 60 degrees under full load on a laptop where all of the vents are covered with a blanket. 
Apple has designed these things with so much thermal headroom that overheating is simply not an issue. And that is really, really good to see because on Intel MacBooks, the cooling solutions that Apple implemented felt like they were just trying to stave off, you know, a complete thermal meltdown. But on these MacBooks, what it feels like Apple is doing here is setting a hard cap at 60 degrees Celsius for the SOC, no matter which one you go for, and just keeping the fans tuned such that it stays at that point. No thermal throttling, no performance degradation. It doesn't even let the thing get that warm to the touch. There is so much thermal headroom in both of these devices that I wouldn't even worry about what spec you're going for. If you pick a 14 inch, yeah, you're probably gonna hear the fans a little bit more than you would on the 16 inch. And you're also going to have less battery life. I mean, that's not to be overlooked. 51% after 90 minutes versus 67% over 90 minutes. That's a difference of 16% over the same period of time. That's pretty noticeable. And finally, the only other thing that you would notice between these two is a slight difference in sound quality thanks to the increased internal volume of the 16 inch that's able to pump out a little bit richer sound. So while there's not a clear winner between these two, they both win overall because they both excel at what they're trying to do. So if you are worried about buying a 14 inch because you wanna maximize your performance, don't worry about it. As long as you're okay with a tiny bit of fan noise, this is a superb package. And that is huge. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to comment and subscribe. Let me know what other tests you'd like to see me do on my five MacBook Pros. My goodness, I have a problem. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.